Hey guys, AJ here from 3D Printing Systems. In today's maintenance video, I'm going to be showing you how to replace the extruder FFC cable on your Upbox 3D printer. Now because this usually comes as part of a kit, I'm also going to show you how to replace the two circuit boards that it attaches to at either end. Now the extruder FFC controls three main functions at your print head. That's the nozzle heating, the gear that pulls the filament through, or the extruder motor, and also the auto level function. So you may be replacing this cable because you're having an issue with one or more of these functions. Now the first step is to unplug the extruder FFC from behind the print head. So make sure your printer's powered off. While it's powered off, you can move the print head all the way to the front of the printer so you can gain access to the screws on this back cover. There's four Phillips head type screws to remove. So you need a screwdriver with the appropriate size bit. It's also very handy to have a screwdriver with a magnetic tip. And it's just going to prevent you from losing any of the screws if they do come all the way out. Another good tip is to have a small container to put the screws and the back cover into after you've finished disassembling the cover. Now once you've removed the cover, you'll have access to the circuit board underneath that the white cable plugs into. So to remove the white cable, we've got this black slide clip here. The easiest way is to take your thumbnail and push outward on the black slide clip to release pressure on the white cable and then you should be able to remove the white cable. Now we'll also have to replace the circuit board. So we'll take out the yellow servo sensor cable and we'll also take out the servo power cable. Once you have those two cables out of the way, remove the triangular printed cover that goes over the rainbow cable, unplug the rainbow cable from the circuit board. And we'll put the new circuit board into the rainbow cable to hold it in place. Plug in the servo power and also plug in the servo sensor cable. Now on the new board you'll also note that you should have a piece of double sided tape installed. So that's to keep the new cable secure and prolong the life of your cable. Next part is to unplug the cable from the back so we can install the new one. Before you start removing screws from the back of your printer, unplug the power and USB cables. To gain access to the FFC connection at the rear of the printer, we first need to remove these eight hex screws that hold on the rear cover and remove the rear cover. Once you've removed all the hex screws, next part is to take the rear cover off. So place your right hand under this lip where the power cable goes, pull it outwards and lean it downward. Next, remove this red power cable from the motherboard. Now the FFC cable connects just up here to this small circuit board, which we'll look at replacing after we've removed the FFC cable. Before we unplug the cable from the slide connector, we need to release these two screws on this bracket that hold the cable in place. Open the top lid of your printer, locate the opposing bracket with your left hand and hold it firmly in place. Then using your right hand, unscrew the two Phillips screws on the bracket on the other side while still holding the inside bracket with your left hand. Now once you have that bracket off, you can take out the bracket on the opposing side, release the slide clip from the FFC cable on the circuit board using your fingernail. And remove the FFC cable from the printer. Now that we've removed the FFC, we can remove the rest of the cables from the small circuit board. So we'll start with this black FFC, again releasing the slide clip to release pressure on the cable before removing it. Unplug the rainbow cable and unplug these two red cables. Once we have all of those unplugged, we can continue to remove the screws from the small circuit board. Again, it's easiest if you have a magnetic tip screwdriver to avoid losing any of these screws. Now the new circuit board will go into the same two screw slots as the old one. So straight away, pop on your new circuit board using the same screws 
into the same position. Now take note of the orientation of the circuit board. These red plugs need to be at the bottom of the circuit board. Once you have your new circuit board in, place the remaining plugs. So you've got the two red plugs at the bottom and each plug should only go into one slot because they're different sizes. The rainbow plug and with the black FFC cable, make sure the slide clip is all the way out. Insert your FFC into the slot. Hold it in place with your left hand or left finger and then slide the side clip all the way in using your thumbnail or the tip of your screwdriver. Now you'll notice that your old cable has a bend in it where it enters at the rear of the printer. Your new cable will be straight but we will need to put this bend in it at some stage. Now there is a right and a wrong way to do it. So the first thing we need to do is insert the cable into the slot at the back of the printer and then bend it round so that we can insert it into the transition board here, this little circuit board. Now it's key to note that the metal connecting pins on one side of the cable should be facing towards the printer and we should be seeing the white side of the cable, not the side with the blue writing. So make sure the black slide clip is all the way out. Insert the extruder FFC cable all the way into that circuit board, holding it in place and then reconnecting the black slide clip to put pressure on the cable. The next step is to insert the FFC cable into our new circuit board at the back of the print head. So first, remove the protective backing on the double-sided tape installed in the circuit board. Ensure the black slide clip is slid all the way out. And then insert your FFC cable all the way in. Place it down onto the adhesive backing and slide the slide clip into place, making sure the slide clip goes all the way in so it puts sufficient pressure onto the cable. Once you've installed the FFC cable correctly, you need to replace the back cover over the cable and tighten it up using a Phillips head screwdriver. Once you've finished putting all the screws into the back cover and the back of the print head, Put the triangle cover over the rainbow cable and move the print head all the way to the front left of the printer, making sure that it doesn't get tugged on by the white FFC cable. Now the reason we do this is because the front left gives us the furthest travel for the FFC cable that it needs to go, so that means we can put an appropriate bend in the back of the cable. Now that we have the print head at its furthest travel point, we can put a bend in the FFC cable. So holding with your left hand and pushing down with your right, make a very slight bend in the cable and then we'll put the bracket back over top. To get the bracket in it's easiest if you put the screw in the bottom of the bracket and then locate the hole in the printer and then put the bracket on the opposite side that the screw needs to screw into inside the printer and start tightening it up then realign the bracket. Once you have it semi-tight, grab your other screw, place it in the top, make sure it slots into the hole, and start tightening that too. Now these only need to be finger tight to hold the cable in place. Double check your slide clip. That's the FFC cable installed. Now to replace the rear cover, Put the power cable back into the correct slot on the motherboard, this red lead here. Line up your bottom connectors with the connecting pin on the inside of the printer. And then slot the back into place. After you've done that, you can start installing the screws that go onto the rear of the printer. Now there will be two longer screws, one top center and one bottom center. Now that the install is complete, you can fire up your printer and start a test print, or alternatively, you can fire it up and just test the function that wasn't working previously, either by doing extrude or by doing auto level. Now if you do get stuck at any stage, contact support, support at 3dprintingsystems.com. I'm AJ, happy printing.